big dollars with Clayton Kershaw or uh, Mookie Betts, but uh, they have an incredibly enriched farm system, which allows them to go out and trade for Mookie Betts. And uh, they did it the right way they, in the city of Los Angeles, where a lot of people have lived through the heartbreak of seven or eight years. It's very much like the Atlanta Braves. You know, they had that Smoltz, uh, John Smoltz, and your Chipper Jones, and you were so good for so long, for so long, for so long, and you kept getting in. Then you win one, and it's uh, it feels different. It's different. Like sometimes, you know, we've said this, in baseball, the Yankees have bought some championships. Sometimes in the NBA, LeBron AD, you buy a championship. But when you really, it's your guys, it's your farm team, you have maybe one other guy you bring in, uh, I mean, because everybody has, you know, somebody not from their organization, but it felt like a real thing last night. When you night. suffer a little bit, you appreciate it more. Absolutely. That's I right. I mean, making it to the World Series and, you know, winning your division every year is not really suffering, but like there, again, you're in Los Angeles, you have championship expectations. That's right. Eric Dickerson, the Hall of Famer, 11 years in the NFL. When he retired, he was the number two running back rusher in the history of the National Football League, and he now joins me live. <laughs> Rams at the Dolphins Sunday on Fox. Actually, a fascinating game because the Rams are coming off a big Monday night game, a short week, travel cross country. Here comes Tua. And Eric, we know you're a Ram. You love the Rams. But they're a fascinating team. We mostly know, Eric, who the bad teams are and who the good teams are. <laughs> and we just found out the Bears were a fraud, even though they had a winning team record. And there's a lot of people around the country that don't buy the Rams. I didn't last year. I do this year. I think their, I think their offensive line play has been better than I thought. You're Mr. Ram. Do you, do you know what they are? Do you buy them? Well, let's say there's one thing. Uh, yeah, I'm the Ram ambassador, but I, I tell it like it is. You know, that, that's, that's my thing. And, and, you know, at first, I just wasn't sure. And still, I'm still a little unsure about them. Uh, you know, like, when I look at last week's game where they got beat down in San Francisco, uh, it was embarrassing. They, they really got manhandled. And, and I think that's because when you're in your conference, you play a team twice a year. They pretty much know you. Yep. And, 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 and that, that just happens. But this football team has shown that they can beat good foot. Well, I took it back. They'd be the, they, we thought they were a good football team in Chicago. They have a great defense. But one thing about the Rams is I feel like this. At certain teams, you feel at one point, you, if you're not playing good, but you're still winning, or you're playing over, expect, over expectations, people not expecting you to be that good, and you start winning, all of a sudden, you may not be that good, but you all of a sudden, you start feeling like you're that good, and you start playing like you're that good. And I feel like that's what the Rams are right now. I think a lot of people are not sure about them, but they feel they're confident, you know, the, the way they beat the Bears last week, you know, at home with not fans, but they still beat them pretty good. And that that's a confidence builder. Now you're going into Miami to play the Dolphins. The Dolphins are a team to me that always plays hard. They might not win, but they're going to play you down to the wire. They're coming in with a young quarterback, Tua, unsure about him. Their offensive line, I think our defensive line can beat up their offensive line, just like our defensive line beat up Chicago's defensive line. So, that's where I think the matchup will be is, is right there in that football game. But the Rams, am I sure about them? I'm still on the cusp. But right now we're five and two, so I'm happy about that. Let me ask you about the trade deadline. The Seahawks went out and got Carlos Dunlap. The Packers reportedly are interested in the Eagles tight end, Zach Ertz. You were traded before. Um, it is much more of a mobile league now. There's more trades than ever. There's a lot of young, aggressive general managers, Eric. A less need. Tom Telesco in L.A., we've got two. They'll go out and make moves. This is the new league we live in. Um, do you is it? Do you ever worry? Carlos Dunlap's not happy in Cincinnati. The locker room in Seattle is excellent. It's excellent. It's got leaders. Do you worry? Can you bring in a player at the trade deadline He's a veteran. He's got expectations, and it and it takes the locker room in a bad place. Do you worry about that at all? I mean, it can happen, but it's it's gonna happen to a, to a young team. You know, if you got a veteran team and you bring a guy in that you say you're gonna say he's a cancer, that's really not gonna change your football team much because you have the leaders in that locker room. Those are the guys. Those are the guys that that the team is gonna follow. And it's like get in line. Or get out. It's like the like like the Antonio Brown to me going to Tampa Bay. Uh, people are like ah, oh, that's a bad deal. I, I say I don't, I don't think it is because this is a veteran football. Tampa's a veteran football team. You bring in a guy who's had some problems, and this could be his last stop. So when you bring a guy in, you feel like if if it's a bunch of young players, a bunch of 22, 23, 24 year olds, and you have maybe one or two veterans, it could be a problem. But when you have a seasoned team 
with the with a good locker room, you don't worry about that guy. Yeah. You know, it's um we look at Dallas and I said earlier, I think they're a rebuilding team. They just don't realize it yet. Now they did move <laughs> Everson Griffin today to the Lions or yesterday, so they're start they're starting to come around in what they are. When you're in the NFL and you played five years for the Rams, five for the Colts, then one each for the Falcons and Raiders, do players know? Do you think, like, when you were you ever on a team and you thought to yourself, listen, man, this is a rebuilding team. Like, we got to get rid of a couple of good players and get draft picks. How does that sit with a player, like if you're a Dallas Cowboy, and you start moving people, are you signaling to the locker room, nobody buys it? We're, we're just this, what's the point? Like, like, can it just dovetail the season? Oh, most definitely. It, it really can. I, I'll say this much here. When I went from the from the Rams to the Colts, that was a whole different locker room. And 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 you felt it right away. The one thing about the being on the Rams, we were a very close-knit football team. We had a bunch of leaders in that locker room. You had the Jack Youngbloods, the Jackie Slaters, the Leroy Irvings, you know, you you and Vince Ferragamo. You had real leaders in that locker room. You go to another team, and then all of a sudden, here is the the jealousy. And, and, and it really, it's jealousy. It's, it's, like, it's almost like, like, a, like a bunch of girls fighting. You know, he's getting too much press. This guy, uh, you know, <laughs> he's making too much money. You know, and I'm serious, Colin. That's just, just how it is. And, and I had never been on a team that was more divided because of your names in the paper or the money you make in my life. And, and the thing is, when other players say it, it becomes a real problem. So most definitely, certain things can, when you go to certain teams and it's just, you feel as soon as you, you you walk in like, man, this is not what I'm used to. And and you you hate to be there, but you have a job to do. That's what it comes down to. I'm here to play football. I'm here to do my job. You more than anybody, as we listen to you, you know the value of landing in a good organization. You just said, I, I was in a good one, went to a bad one. If you're Trevor Lawrence's agent, he doesn't need New York. He could stay in college. The Jets are a mess. What would you tell Trevor Lawrence if the Jets are the team, they have the number one pick, <laughs> and you represent him, and he's already been dominant at college, what would you tell him? Man, I'll tell him maybe go back to college. Oh, oh you know what? I forced it why they, they're going to just have to trade you. Like, you don't want to be there. Make it, like, because I'm telling you, it's just certain organizations. And I, the Jets are a bad organization. It, they are. Cincinnati Bengals, bad organization. I mean, you know, you've been bad for so long. Why are you bad? The Cleveland Browns, you know, bad organization. They're trying to fight their way out of it. But it's certain teams that are bad, but you're bad for a reason. I mean, you really are. It's just not about the players. It starts at the top, and it works its way down. It's, it's the drafting. It's the decisions you make, the players you keep, the players you don't draft. You know, you, you move up to get somebody like, why do we take him? We didn't need a, we didn't need a quarterback. We needed offensive linemen. I mean, so it's it's a lot of it's a lot of moving parts there, but most definitely, if he goes to the Jets, man, it's, it's certain players that the team you went to makes your career. It really does. Yeah. And you go and you go to another team, your career is not the same. Yeah. I always say, if you put Tom Brady in Cleveland for his whole career in Cincinnati, he's not the Tom Brady that we know right now. Joe Montana, if you put him in Cleveland or Cincinnati, he's not the Joe Montana. It's just the, it's, that's just how it is. It's certain organizations that. They, they, they breed winning. They know how to win. There's certain organizations that know how to lose, and that's all they know. You know, finally, Eric Dickerson, the Hall of Famer. So if you were 13 again and you see all the money, <laughs> all the money going to quarterbacks and wide receivers, and you're a talented kid, and Eric Dickerson now is 10, 11, 12 years old, would you still play running back? Uh, <laughs> no, you, know, you know what makes that a great question? My son is eight years old, and, and he loves running the football. He plays, you know, he plays running back. He loves that. And my wife, she wants him to play quarterback. Um, I just feel like you do what you love. I mean, me personally, I want to be a running back, and I'd be a running back all over again. I just love that position. I loved everything about it, especially in my era. My era was the running back. It was all about the running back. And that's what made it. That's what made it special. I mean, it really did. I mean, if you had a great back or a back that could dominate a game, boom, you use it. Today's football is way different. I mean, it's about throwing the football. It's about receivers. It's about you know tight ends. But most definitely, I would still go to my same position, the running back, because I believe this, Colin. If I was playing in today's league. Man, I might even be more dominant there because these guys don't want to tackle. Nothing, you know? <laughs> they I don't. Think I, I, think I, get, I, I think I get 2,100 yards almost every year. 
That's funny. So your son's mom wants him to play quarterback. Yes, he wants him to play quarterback. And 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 but he loves running. He and, and he's man, he is so fast. And I'm not I'm not saying my son's gonna play football, nothing like that. I just I'm not that dad. But man, he's fast and he can cut, he can do things. 